I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Zeifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about polygon art, colors, scrolling, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool post about animated polygon art. You're probably thinking, what the heck is that? Well, what the this, heck is is, that? this is what the heck that is. It is polygon artwork that is animated. I'd so, be lying if I'd say I wasn't impressed. Get it? Because it's a lion. Yeah, I, I got the joke. Uh, so this is just one SVG file. And you're probably thinking, wow, well, how the heck are they animating every individual triangle if it's all one SVG? Well, it's using this pretty cool library called Timeline Max by Greensock. So we can click on that and it will open up the site for Timeline Max and you can download it on GitHub or you can just download the zip if you prefer. And basically this, this library allows you to do what's called tweening. So you can do animations between one point and another and that turns out it gives you pretty fine control so you can take something like this SVG and you can break it apart into its individual components or in this case these individual triangles and you can animate them one by one so here is the JavaScript to do that and it's surprisingly lightweight it's just using that timeline max library and then the HTML is a little bit more complicated, but that's actually just because it's one SVG file. So that's all that's there. You can Man, also. Man, that's impressive. You were just waiting for that, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I was sitting yeah, on that. You're holding on to since that the, one. This is the lion pun. So you can make this guy appear or disappear. So pretty similar to the lion, this just makes all the polygons appear or disappear all at one time. And you can also make these interactive. So I can hover over this and it breaks apart. Or oh, what a tough break. When I roll the mouse off of it, it all comes back together. So anyway, uh, I thought this was pretty cool. It's a nice way to spruce up some polygon SVGs just by adding a little bit of animation. Yeah, and uh, you know this article might be not available soon, so check it out before it's polygon. Next up, we have a uh, little jQuery plugin called Unveil that is used to lazy load images using jQuery or Zepto.js. Now, lazy loading is the act of loading images only when you scroll down the page, thereby decreasing load times of the rest of the page, which is really good for mobile users or people with slow internet connections. Because think about it if you have a retina image that is quite a lot to download on a page. So what's really nice about this library is that it is less than 1K and very easy to use. So let's say you have your images on the page here. Just give it a jQuery or Zepto selector and call the unveil method. Uh, by the way, I think it should be called veil because it's like you're not unveiling it. You're like veiling it until it's mm. ready. Mm. Anyway, you can also give it a, a threshold in pixels. So normally when the... Uh, images are loaded or unveiled, it would be just when it's scrolled to. But if you want to give some padding in pixels, you can do that by passing an argument to the unveil method. You also get a callback if you want to that you can do other things inside of the unveiled image. So here is a little demo on the page and you can kind of scroll down quickly to see these images coming in or can you? That's how quickly the plugin works. It is compatible with all browsers, IE7 and up, and that is pretty much it. Very, very easy to use plugin, very quick, so go ahead and check it out if you want to unveil some images. Thanks for unveiling that, Jason. Okay, uh, next one is this really cool blog post called It's Only Color from ThoughtBot, and it's an article all about color theory, the color wheel, and how to choose color palettes for your website. So. If you're designing a site and you kind of just feel like you have no clue, maybe you're 
a developer and you're picking colors and that's something that is just new to you. Well, there's a couple of techniques that you can use to think about color. And these are techniques that have been already established for a really long time in the art world. And so it makes sense to bring them to web design. Uh, there's this color wheel here, and the article sort of goes through and explains what the color wheel is, where it came from, and it explains primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So primary, of course, is yellow, red, blue. Secondary is orange, violet, green, and tertiary is yellow, orange, red, orange, red, violet, blue, violet, blue, green, and yellow, green. So you can see that there on the color wheel with those helpful triangles to kind of figure that out. And then there's a, some vocabulary words as well, hue, tint, shade, and saturation, just to kind of set things up. And then it explains how to choose a color palette. So maybe one way you're starting out is with a black and white website. And then you can think about, you know, what parts of the website are text, what are images, and how should these different things maybe be highlighted or de-emphasized. And then it tells you to draw inspiration from the world around you and maybe look at classic works of art and draw inspiration from those. So here is an example of that. You can look at the colors that are being used in this image and it picks them out there. And then you can apply those to a web page because like I said before, a lot of this has already been figured out and it's been figured out in very analytical and technical terms. So if that's the way that you think, which it certainly is the way that I think about color, it's a pretty useful way for you to apply color to your website. Anyway, really cool article. Definitely be sure to check this one out. You know, I was going to make an off-color joke during that, hmm. but I didn't want to upset you. Glad you're keeping it light-hearted, Jason. Next up, we don't have... Don't want to saturate the show with too many jokes. Yeah. Might have to pull down the shade or something on that one. Hmm. Next up, we have a jQuery plugin called Scroll Speed. This will allow you to use jQuery to programmatically scroll down a web page, control the speed and steps of scrolling on your web page. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and check this out. Here is a page with a lot of text, and I'm just going to do a very small scroll here, and you'll notice it goes all the way down the page, like a lot. So this has been scroll jacked, and if you really want to piss off your users, this is the plugin to do it. Now, there are legitimate reasons to jack the scrolling. Let's say, you know, you have one of those sites that has, uh, what is it, parallax scrolling, mm. change the, um, you know, the units with which to scroll down the page. Anyway, this is very, very easy to use. Just include jQuery and then call it jQuery.scrollSpeed and you give it two units. The first is the step, which defaults to 100 units and the speed, which is 800 milliseconds. So you can play around with that, see which one is better for your particular page. And if you want to, you can also use custom easing as a third argument. And that's it. This is just a really quick, easy to use plugin. And uh, so if you want to use that, check that out. We'll have a link in the show notes right below the video. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is an article called Design Last. Now, traditionally, most websites have been putting design first, and they maybe design this beautifully responsive layout, and then they try to cram that into some sort of developmental process. And I don't know, I, I think that is still very valid, but this article sort of makes an argument for doing things the opposite way and thinking about how can you design maybe your HTML and your content first, which is still true in the other process, and then start to build around that. So this is actually a really long article, but I'm just going to T -L -D -R. Sc scroll down to the list as it says here. So first is content and it says this is the only constant across all your devices. So of course that's where you want to start. You want to start with content and then you want to describe it using HTML. And then once you have the content 
nailed down, that's when you can start moving into other parts of the design. Anyway, it's a really cool blog post. Definitely be sure to check this one out. It presents a lot of ideas about thinking about how design and development relates to one another that I haven't really seen questioned in a pretty long time. So very cool stuff. Anyway, that's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. <laughs> wow, looks like your laptop's on fire there, Jason. Yeah, kind of like us with those jokes.